You can use almost any one of the vinifera wine-oriented varieties to make modest wine, but when we get into the premium category where you might spend $8 or more on a bottle, we tend to choose grape varieties that are well suited to making premium wine. Within the world of white wines, the majority are made from one of these four grape varieties because they have such an excellent track record for quality. Generally speaking, Riesling tends to be on the lighter end of the body spectrum, whereas Sauvignon Blanc hangs out in the middle, more often medium bodied than either light or full. Chardonnay tends to give us quite a lot more richness of texture, while Pinot Grigio can be all over the map. Riesling as a grape variety is one that's native to Germany and suited to very cool climates. It gives us a bright, refreshing, aromatic nose full of things like green apple and lime and citrus. We often get a touch of floral aromatics as well. Riesling, when we're shopping for it, we want to think about whether we're shopping for a dry Riesling or one that has a little sweetness. The way to tell is to look at that alcohol content. The lower it is below 13, the more likely there is to be a little hint of sweetness on the tip of the tongue. Riesling can be made dry, but it is less commonly found that way. Most of the time when we see Riesling on the shelf, we can expect a sweet tart wine with just a hint of sweetness. Not enough for dessert, but perfect for things like chips and salsa and appetizers. When we look at Sauvignon Blanc, on the other hand, the question is never really if it's sweet or dry, because it's always made as a dry style with no noticeable sweetness on the tip of the tongue. Sauvignon Blanc does vary in style, though, based on where it's grown. Cooler places in the world, like New Zealand here, for example, tend to make it in a bracing style that's got a kind of white grapefruit and lemon quality to it that serves to brighten almost anything you would serve with it. This style of Sauvignon Blanc makes the mouth water. It's not particularly heavy, but delivers a huge amount of flavor. There are premium Sauvignon Blanc styles, though, that come from warmer parts of the world that might be barrel fermented. They are the exception to the rule, but sometimes when we look at Sauvignon Blanc from places like Bordeaux in France or in California, we do occasionally encounter barrel fermented styles. However, Chardonnay, the 600-pound gorilla in the white wine world, is really the grape we associate with that oaky quality that we get from either fermenting or aging a wine in new oak barrels. That flavor comes through almost as if we've added a splash of bourbon or cognac to the wine because it comes from the exact same source, aging in barrels. This is the single most popular premium grape variety in the world, white or red. Chardonnay can be grown in almost any region from the very cool parts of Northern Europe to very warm parts of California. And as a result has a huge stylistic range. Last but not least, there's a grape variety that I think has joined these three as being sort of in the major leagues of importance in the wine world only in the last few decades. When it's grown in the Italian style, we call it Pinot Grigio. When we make it in the French style, though, you might see it labeled as Pinot Gris, G-R-I-S. The Italian variation is by far the most popular. It is done in a lighter, brighter, crisper style with a weight that's closer to that of Riesling or Sauvignon Blanc, and rarely with any noticeable sweetness on the tip of the tongue. Generally speaking, these are easygoing wines, perfect for summer afternoons. They're not terribly high in alcohol, and they're not terribly pungently flavored either. They're wine to relax with on the patio. These simple flavors tend to be more like golden apple or simple poached pear. French-style Pinot Gris tends to taste a little peachier, seem a little heavier, and sometimes has a touch of residual sweetness on the tip of the tongue as well.